a lot of this work we do on board here is in support of the fishing industry and helping to monitor fish stocks and the ecosystem. And in Northern Ireland, fishing is very important. Um, a lot of people are employed in the fishing industry. And in the R this is the Irish Sea, we have these circles, different colours. They represent different areas that are used for catching. Uh, the green bit is where queenies are caught. Uh, and the black bit is where we would catch prawns. So there's different um, fleets out in the RC capturing different types of fish. So it's worth, in 2013, the fishing industry was worth around 22 million pounds in uh, first sale value. Um, so it um, employs 814 fishermen. So there's a lot of people in Northern Ireland who are involved um, with catching fish and putting fish and chips in our tables. So the top landing in Northern Ireland, the most important uh, species caught is nephrops. So we have got some nephrops here. So see, that's the nephrops. You might know it as scampi, where we take the tail off and put it in batter and you have scampi and chips. And if you get a nice big prawn like that, you might have it in your prawn cocktail. But they're very important to uh, Northern Ireland, and that's what the majority of our fishing fleet would be fishing for. They are uh, found mostly in the uh, Western Irish Sea, just off the coast. There's a, an area where there's a mud patch, and they uh, they burrow in the ground there, and they live in the mud in the burrows. Then we have uh, scallops is the next most important in terms of this is in terms of value. So you might have seen these on the beach. This is a scallop shell, and scallop shells you can actually edge a scallop from its shell. They're a bit like uh, tree trees where they lay down a, a ring for every year. So I don't know if you can just make out these darker bands on this shell. Uh, this one's a lot easier. We've got these nice light bands here. If you take a band, that equals a year. So the shell grows, and then in the winter, um, because it's colder, they grow slower, and then you get a band, a bit like a tree trunk. And we use that to edge the scallops. So this scallop's actually 12 years old. So they grow quite old, some of them. This one's seven. They're important, and uh, a few of the uh, we've got some scalp gear on the back of the boat. You'll see in a bit. Um, then we have our first fish. We have mackerel. I don't know if you've ever gone fishing for mackerel in the summer. No, with a, with a rod, that's good fun. And then herring. Then we have uh, crabs, uh, queenies, which a bit like a smaller scallop really and then lobsters and then our first traditional sort of white fish uh, the haddock uh, monkfish and then number 10 we have cod so on board here then we carry out a lot of surveys um, to see how many fish there are and if they're healthy and if there's any changes in the numbers of the fish and we use that information to try to inform the uh, fishing industry of um, whether they should be catching more or less fish and also looking at effects of climate and changes in the ecosystem in general and one of the methods we use is the trawl survey here's just some images so I on the boat we have two big winches and then we have this net drum and we go out and we put the net in you can see the guys put the net into the into the sea and then we trawl it under scientific conditions so we trawl it for maybe half an hour at uh, fixed stations every year <coughs> and then we, we bring it in and we empty it into the hopper 
here we have a typical catch with a, a nice cord there in the middle and some small whitings and a, there's a wee herring there. And the scientists might have seven or uh, scientists in here and we'll be sorting the fish into the different species. And then we carry out uh, measurements and weights. So we weigh the number of the different species and we carry out measure, um, biologicals on them. Um, here we're removing the odalis from a fish. So you may not have heard of the odaliths. The odaliths in a fish, uh, in the head, they have these two little ear bones called odaliths. And they're, uh, they're like we, they're little ear stones. And they use them to um, detect vibrations and orientate themselves. But we can use them to edge the fish. So it's a bit like the scallops again on trees. What we do is we take the uh, take the odorless side, and then we, we mount them in resin. We get a big saw and we cut the odorless in half and that opens them up. I don't know if you can just see there. Start to see the signs of little bands. So, so when we look at the odorless under the microscope, this is light coming up through the odorless. You can see these these bands and we use we use them to tell us how old the fish is so each band is equal again to a year so this fish is a cod and it was five years old so that's when the fish were born and then each of these is the birthday so it's one year old two year old three year old four, five year old and then we caught it <laughs> so there we go the, uh, we we take the odorless out on board and then we take them all land and we would do them in the lab um, because we're, we're maximizing our time here on the boat because it's expensive to operate at sea we would take things like that back we, uh, we have yes in Northern Ireland in Belfast up in uh, Malone Road New Forge Lane we have our uh, headquarters there and we have the lab up there where we have uh, Sandus who section and, and edge the fish and then they would uh, have meetings, international meetings because it's important to make sure everybody's edging the fish the same and they would collaborate and have workshops. So there's a lot of other work that goes on from that. Uh, so we also edge the fish and we uh, find out uh, the fecundity, how many eggs uh, female fish have. Um, and this is all information to tell us how healthy the fish are and whether the fish are, um, if the trends in fish are going up or down and it's, is the biology changing in relation to sea temperatures and lots of different aspects. So we also the scallop surveys uh, where we operate inshore because scallops like to live on the rocky ground. So we're operating in these areas and we've got the scallop gear that's out the back there and we also look at the plankton, what fish eat, the zooplankton and the copepods and the baby fish we use a finer mesh net um, and this is actually you saw these are uh, the larvae of herring so Herring lay sticky eggs on the seabed, and then when these hatch, you have these, these little larvae, and there's maybe a thousand little larvae in there. Well, 99.9% .9 of them will die before they get to adult. So they, that's, they lay a lot, a lot, and a lot, lots and lots and lots of eggs, and then the, the adults don't look after the eggs, they just go off and leave the eggs to look after themselves. And, Lots of them will die, and very few of them survive until we get to adults. But the plankton surveys, they let us uh, tell us where fish maybe are spawning. This is the Irish Sea, here's Belfast up here. And this is the Isle of Man in the middle. And this is the area we would normally operate. 
And uh, here you can see where we caught some cod eggs. This is where the cod are, are spawning. So it's uh, get quite lots of information on different life history stages to give us a complete picture of the stocks and the biology of the fish. Have the areas changed over the years? Um, they mostly use the same spawning areas. There's sort of fine scale changes, but in general they're they use these areas. And then the, the last major survey type is the camera survey. So with the scampi, you can see here they live in uh, burrows on uh, sort of muddy ground. They build little burrows. And we use a, a, a sledge that Gavin will show you in a minute um, to drag along the seabed and capture some film um, of the burrows and then we have scientists who look at the film and count the number of burrows and then from the number of burrows we can tell how many prawns there were living in them and this is the, the area where we do the survey and apparently there's around 5 billion prawns in the uh, that's quite a lot of prawns I think it would take a a lot of scampi dinners to eat them all. <coughs> but you have to be a pretty good expert because there's lots of other animals who make holes as well so you have to be able to tell the difference between the scampi hole and these other species. 